In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a 2009 Mercedes-Benz ML320 Bluetech, which is the diesel version of Mercedes-Benz M-Class. Now, the M-Class is actually on its fourth generation with a brand new model that was just introduced for 2019. Um, this is a second generation version of the M-Class. It was first introduced in 1997, and my earliest memories of the M-Class are watching Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Um, they had a couple M-Classes that were decked out in camouflage, grill guards, um, they had you know guards over all the headlights and tail lights, um, and it was a pretty sweet looking uh, car. And not only did it look awesome, but there was a scene in the movie where a T-Rex, or maybe it was a couple T-Rexes, tore apart the M-Classes. Of course, they stood up perfectly well uh, as far as you know being crushed, but you know tore the cars apart. And uh, it was a pretty cool scene. Uh, I think that was the first time that I really fell in love with the Mercedes-Benz M-Class and uh, have continued to appreciate it ever since. Now, um, you know, coming out in 1997, I feel like the Mercedes-Benz uh, M-Class was really kind of ahead of the game a little bit in terms of styling. Looking back now, those look really dated. Um, but they've continued to progress on that design and further develop it, and it continues to be a really great looking car. Now the second generation of the M-Class um, was a huge advancement on the M-Class in terms of quality and design. And going forward into the third and fourth generations of the M-Class, um, I feel like this design really kind of set the tone that was carried forward in those next two generations. And if you get a brand new 2019 M-Class, it still has a very similar shape and feel to the second generation M-Class. Now, one thing I'm not a fan of on the M-Class is the naming nomenclature. There are so many different versions of the M-Class. They're all related to um, the engine configuration. And to make things even more complicated, for 2016, they changed the name of the M-Class to the GLE class. So from 2016 on, um, all M-Classes are now referred to as the GLE class. In addition to that, even though I keep calling it the M-Class, um, they've made some changes calling it the ML-Class as well. So the M-Class, the ML-Class, and the GLE class are all referring to the same vehicle. Now this is the 320 CDI, um, or Bluetech engine, which um, gives it that ML320 designation. It's got a three liter V6, um, and so the three liter V6 is sort of tied to the ML320, um, in some of the other vehicles, it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, they've got the 550, which has a 5.5 liter V8. The 350 has a 3.5 liter V6. Um, they've got the ML6, uh, sorry, ML63 AMG, which has a 6.2 liter V8. So I'm not sure how they got to 6.3. Maybe they're rounding up or something. But um, anyway, that's kind of how the naming uh, structure works on these cars. It's typically tied to the uh, you know engine displacement on the vehicle. Um, and so the higher the number is, the more likely, the more powerful it's gonna be. So the second generation M-Class was produced from 2006 to 2011, and in 2009, they gave it some minor refreshes. So this version, which is the 2009, has a few of those changes. Uh, what you're gonna get is a slightly larger grill on the front. Um, the headlights were modernized a little bit, so they're slightly different style. The front bumper here is slightly different. Different mirrors. Coming around to the back, you also get a slightly different rear bumper on the 2009 model. Now in addition to that, for 2009 they came out with some different engine options as well, um, including, this is like I said, the Blue Tech, um, which is Mercedes designation for their diesels. Sometimes you also see CDI uh, as another designation for the diesel model. Um, so that was a new engine for 2009. Um, and with that, you get slightly improved gas mileage, additional torque, and then obviously the durability and longevity of a diesel engine. So for this era, uh, looking at 2009, I don't want to go through all of the different engine options that have been available on the M-Class, but for this generation, some of the different engine options that are available, this, like I said, is the Blue Tech, which is a 3 liter V6. Um, it gets 18 miles per gallon in the city, 24 miles per gallon in the highway. Um, they've also got the ML350, which is kind of the base version of the M-Class. You can get that in either rear drive or all-wheel drive. And the all-wheel drive designation on these M-Classes um, is termed 4MATIC. 
So if you see the formatic designation on the vehicle, that'll tell you that it's got all-wheel drive. Um, if you get a rear-wheel drive ML350, you're going to be looking at 16 miles per gallon in the city, 21 miles per gallon on the highway. And if you get the all-wheel drive, that's going to drop slightly to 15 in the city and 20 on the highway. Now, in addition to uh, those two options, so you've got the ML350 is kind of your base model. The ML320 is the diesel, which is more of a premium model because you get that really good gas mileage and um, torque and the longevity of the diesel. Um, they've also got two performance models. So the ML550 has a 5.5 liter eight cylinder, um, very powerful, very quick, um, but you see a hidden gas mileage dropping to 13 in the city and 18 on the highway. The ML63 AMG has that 6.2 liter V8, which makes it super fast. Um, that's going to hit you with 11 miles per gallon in the city and 15 miles per gallon on the highway. Now when Mercedes came out with the ML63 AMG, um, it was actually the most powerful SUV available on the market uh, in the world. It got uh, zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. So incredibly quick vehicle. And that's one of the cool things about the M-Class is that there's so much variation in terms of, um, you know, you can get one that gets really great gas mileage like the diesel here. Um, if you're, you know, trying to get into one at a reasonable price, the ML350 kind of fills that niche. And then they've got those performance variants for somebody that really, you know, wants to get the most performance out of the vehicle. So it's great that they have those options available. Now. You know, we went around, looked at the styling on the M-Class. Some of the things that make it really unique, um, I love these little grills that you've got up on the hood of the vehicle. And for me, one of the things, going back to the very first M-Class in 1997, this little pillar that kind of cuts down diagonally on the rear of the vehicle, I feel like Mercedes was the first to really bring kind of that dramatic styling to an SUV. And you see that on so many SUVs on the market today. I feel like that was one of the trademarks of the uh, the M-Class was that design cue um, and the way that the window kind of cuts up here at the back. So much of a, uh, you know, separation from a lot of the boxy square SUVs that preceded it. Um, so that's one of the things I really like about it. Obviously, you get a lot of nice design cues throughout the vehicle. Looking down at the rear spoiler here with the dual exhaust gives it a nice look. Um, good, you know, good wheel options that come stock on the M-Class. I'm also a big fan of the grill, so I love the style of these front grills on the M-Class. You know, even though this is a 2009, so it's, you know, nine years old, um, I feel like it still has a lot of really cool design cues that um, make it continue to look good, uh, you know, even 10 years after original production. And jumping into the interior, it's the same story inside. Really top-notch materials throughout the vehicle. This specific model has got about 93,000 miles. And you know, you'll see looking at the vehicle that it's held up really well. There's not really any significant signs of wear in the vehicle. And that's the great thing is on you know these German SUVs, they use really high-end materials. That's what makes them expensive from the beginning, but that holds up really well as the vehicle ages and um, you know makes them great vehicles to consider as a used vehicle um, as opposed to a lot of the you know cheaper cars that you can get on the market that don't hold up material wise in their old age they're cheaper at the original purchase time and you know obviously for the average consumer you may not be able to afford this vehicle as a new vehicle but you'll see this specific model is thirteen thousand dollars with ninety three thousand miles which is a great deal for a diesel um you know in, in terms of that diesel this is pretty low mileage it's got a lot of life left in it and jumping around to the back looks like we got now i'm not sure how it's got the automatics open and closed looks like i did that wrong so let's try pulling that button and let it open this time there we go it's a pretty advanced feature for a 2006 model so it looks like in the back we got quite a bit of cargo space here and the shape of the vehicle being kind of tall and skinny makes it very usable space as well you can see you got the split rear uh rear seat in here so it looks like those by pulling this lever right here fold down and can further increase that cargo capacity let's jump up front and see how far that goes down 
Oh, you know what? I think you can lift this guy up to get the rear seat laying completely fat, flat. So there we go. Completely flat in the back. So likewise, this seat can fold down. And with it laying completely flat like that's huge because you can get some of those larger objects into the vehicle if you don't have a you know pickup or something. It gives you that convenience to be able to haul trip or haul uh, passengers and also get some larger items in the vehicle. Push that button. Let that go ahead and close. So really a great vehicle design-wise, inside and out. So the M-Class has a really interesting shifter here. Instead of having your traditional shifter down in the middle or something that you'd pull on the side here, it's got this little dial that you just kind of push and hold on and it shifts into drive. When you want to shift into park, you just push on the silver button on the outside. Now, one thing that is really great about this car is despite the fact that it's a diesel, um, it's still very quiet. Um, and, you know, for the most part, you can't even tell that it's a diesel. You can hear a little bit of just kind of the uh, the light clanking sound that a diesel makes, um, but it's no more noticeable than what you'd get from a gasoline engine. So, um, you know, the, the old uh, thought or idea that engines were loud and noisy and smelly um, is kind of a thing of the past. Diesels have really advanced in recent years. Um, and not only, you know, do you get that really great fuel economy, the unmatched torque, the longevity of a diesel engine because they're much simpler than gasoline engines and so there's less that can go wrong there's fewer moving parts um, but in addition to all of that now you get a quiet ride and good driving characteristics just like you would in a gasoline engine the other thing too is because diesels have turbos they're quite powerful and so you can get great fuel economy but when you need the power you can really push on the gas and it responds very well so um, this car has got a lot of torque. It can, um, you know, apply that whether you're starting from a stop or if you're already moving and you just want to pass somebody. It's got a lot of power and capability to be able to do that effortlessly. So it's really nice uh, with the M-Class. Um, the other thing is that the M-Class is really quiet. That's one of the great things when you get a premium model vehicle um, is just the difference between you what you'd get in your traditional economy car and a luxury vehicle in terms of the ride quality, the sound um, is significant. And so, um, you know, that's thicker glass, it's better insulation, it's uh, firmer suspension and, um, you know, just materials that absorb and uh, resist those sound characteristics quite well. Like I said, this vehicle's got 93,000 miles. There's no rattles. Um, I don't really hear any unusual uh, road noise or wind noise coming for the vehicle, uh, despite all that mileage. It's held up very well because of those good quality materials that Mercedes used when they first produced the vehicle. Now, um, along with that, as vehicles get older, they tend to become sloppy in terms of steering and suspension and um, handling. And with this vehicle, you don't really get that at the same level. You know, despite being a fairly high mileage vehicle, um, it still handles and drives really well. The steering is very firm. There's not really any play in it. Um, the suspension is still uh, firm as well. And so you're not, you don't feel like the car is rolling or tilting as you go around corners. Um, you feel like, you know, rather than that, it handles really nicely. There's good connection with the road and, um, you know, the car performs the way that you would expect it to perform. So that's a review of the 2009 Mercedes-Benz ML320 Bluetech. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the section below. For more car videos, subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching.